Welcome to Happily Married Monday with the Jollies. We are the authors of the book, Make Love, Make Money, Make It Last, 10 Secrets of Shaping a Great Marriage. If you don't have a copy, go to Jolly Marriage right now. Go to uh, Jolly Marriage right now. You get a uh, free chapter from the book. Free. Like free? Everybody likes free. <laughs> Uh, we had quite a response from last week's show. Quite a response. We did a show on, is COVID-19 creating mental health issues in your relationship or impacting your relationship beyond... Beyond sex. Beyond which sex. was the topic. That was beyond the topic. But today is a little different. Yeah. we Same kind of arena, but we're we, saying, is stress impacting the mental health of Good. your marriage. All right, so let me tell you, we, we and then a subtitle. Okay. Did you get carried away? Well, we got a lot of people who responded. I just want to say that was one of the most highly responsive shows we've done because this is a, a serious issue. Okay, so what is the sub? Tell us what. You All right, doing. the subtitle. Oh, do it again. Topic. Okay, the topic is is stress impacting the mental health of your marriage. Uh huh. And the subtext is the mental health of your marriage creates the culture in your home mm. how about that mm. creates the culture in your home yeah and that's be it be it COVID or or, or before COVID. what kind of culture right exists with your household right and is the whole COVID situation then exacerbating it right or making it a safe haven where you can help somebody else out and how is it impacting your personal relationship because this is a challenging time we all know that that we are in the midst of a challenging time. Statistics show, according to the National Psychological Association, that uh, mental health is at an all-time high in terms of disruption. It's off the charts yeah. in terms of problems right. in the health arena. Let's talk about okay, okay. mental health and why it's so critical to help people. Because look, mental health challenges everybody at some point in time. It really does. We've got Alexandria, Virginia. But mental health. And this COVID time is exasperating because people like me, I was talking to somebody today, people like me who are extroverts, is it's challenging. We want to be around people. I was on a television, a BMO in the house. Uh, I was on a television interview and they said, what are you going to, what do you miss the most? And what are you going to do first when this is over? I said, I'm going to hug somebody. That's what I miss the most. Other than me. I've been <laughs> hugging her. I've been hugging her a lot. But I have not hugged anybody else other than her for six months. I want to hug my children, hug my grandchildren, hug my friends. I love hugging people. And so, uh, you know, uh, that's what I want but to do. But for me, the fear of contamination is enough for me to stay in my house cleaning 24 7 and working i'm either working or i'm cleaning yeah that's what she's doing all the time or, or working out or working out and, and working in the office cleaning or working out so let's go back to a couple of things i don't i don't want to miss did you know that october 10th was world mental health day wow and has been world mental health day for at least 10 years no, we didn't know I had that no clue we didn't but once knew. i started let us expand the what's going on and the challenges with mental health because the suicide rate is up. So once I started doing some more But that was the Lord. The Lord put it on our heart to talk about this because we I don't did. know who is struggling. We have no idea, but we do know that when the God when God gives us a, a, an assignment, we got to do it. And so marriages are being stressed to the to the limits. Families are being torn apart. People are being are being uh, just disruptive. Uh, abuse is up. Child uh, abuse. Child about abuse and, and domestic abuse. Domestic abuse. So we want you to do a couple of things. We want to talk about how you get through this with some principles to help you get through this yes. from the book and from our experience. Okay. okay, so let's go back. October 10th is Mental Health Day. Right. The theme this year is greater investment for all. So that means that we got to talk about it more. Right. We, and we got to have communication. And, and be open to listening. Right. Because you don't know what struggles people are having. And sometimes the struggles you don't know. But just being in your midst and being in that positive environment, like like the children, we kind of take in and, and, and nurture. From it's looking, culture. We it's culture. We just don't know what's the culture in your household. Right. Then, also, for Mental Health Day, the color is yellow. I didn't know that either. Mm. Also, 
there is a USA Mental Health First Aid Program. A USA Mental Health First Aid Program is the national program where they teach you the skills on how to respond to people when they have signs of mental illness and abuse. I didn't even know that existed. So, so that's something, if, if, if you feel like, you know what, I want to become more educated in just in terms of how I can be supportive right. of people who might want to talk to me, or at least I'll know what to look for in the arena. It's the USA Mental Health First Aid. You can Google that and they have courses and you can sign up and take a course that actually helps you understand what to say right. and how to react to people. I got my friend Basha Jordan from uh, Orlando. Hey. From, uh, we went to a seminary together. Oh, wow. Right. And then a couple of interesting quotes, I think. What mental health needs is more sunlight, more candor, and more unashamed conversation? So let's, let's put a pin right there. We got to talk about that. Mental health is critically important for people to talk and to be open to get help. Now, we say this every week. If you broke your arm, what would you do? You go to the doctor and get it fixed. If you broke your leg, what would you do? You go to the doctor and get it fixed. But many of us are struggling with some mental health issue and we figure we're going to do it ourselves. Or we figure, we're struggling with depression or we're just struggling with grief. And we say, oh, I just fix it myself. No, get help. Look, asking, going to get help does not make you weak. It helps to keep you strong. Let me say that again. Going to get help does not make you weak. It helps to keep you strong. We've had conversations this week with a, a, a number of couples who refuse, one of the partners refuses to go get counseling. Because, you know, I, I don't need counseling. No, stop that thinking. If it's a struggle for one, if you are married. Now, everybody who got married gave a vow. They said, I do. I do. Now, they might have written their vow, but they definitely said, I do. And when you do, then do. Like the old man well, told me. Well, do in good times. Oh, well, look, like the old man said to me when we, when we got married, and I went to the man across the street, Mr. Benson, and he had been married 50 years. I said, Mr. Benson, what's the secret to being happily married all this time? He said, I am happily married. He said, well, I said, well, what's the secret? He said, well, did you say I do? I said, yes, sir. He said, now do. Ha <laughs> ha! Now do! You got to do. So if she's feeling upset, if she's not happy, but that I got to be part of this. But that means it. in season and out of That's season. That's right. That's right. When you feel like it or not. Right. And is it, what is it? Is it with Bible study or like and you talk about it's not about your feelings? We know the right thing to do, but our feelings get in the way, and so we don't do it. Right. So, so if we're saying that we can be of help to someone who has is struggling with depression, anxiety, oh. it is just or more important that you be the kind of person that they can come to. Right. So, right? so, so, so it's it's a it's a two so we talk about point. and we talk about this. One of the reasons why we've been married thirty six years. Going on 30, so we haven't had an argument over 33 years, because we talk about the ups and downs, the good, the bad, the hurts, the pains, the, 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 the failures, the successes. We talk about it. We talk about it to each other. But and we want you to start this conversation process, because most marriages break up for communication problems. But we're able to do that because we allow ourselves to be vulnerable to each other. That's a whole nother conversation. It is. It is. But we, we want, that's why people, we've been saying this is so critical that people get access to the resources that will help them to be more open to communicate. Whether it's our book, get our book, but if not our book, get somebody else's book. Get resources that will help you because we want to save marriage. Help you understand who you are. Yeah. And accept the challenges that you have. I eat. I told my wife, I eat. I told my wife yesterday. She said, we were talking about something. We were driving and we're going one, one, one day a week or twice a week. She says, I want to go out. I want to go for a ride. And I take her for a ride. And we were talking about something. And she said, well, you do that. I said, I tell you already, I got issues. I got issues. I got some issues. I'm working on them. 
but I got issues. I'm not, I'm, sometimes not I don't about. know if you're working hard. I just think you like the issues. I just I like some of the issues, like I, being messy. I like that one. He likes, but he's, he's not working on that. Well, I'm so better. You know what? <laughs> well, well, you are better because I have influenced you. You have conditioned me. I have. Oh, which is better? Influence. I think I like influence better. I think you than have influenced me well. <laughs> she has a way of influencing me, like a hook on a brother up. I think that is very important that you positively influence your man. Yeah, positively. So influence I don't complain because his stuff is all over the place, but I do reward him and remind him. When I put it away. Oh, right. she right. she reminds me, and then after that, I I keep that in mind. Next time I start seeing getting that feeling to be messy, I say, "Oh, I remember that feeling." Oh, let me put it away. And then he reminds me, "Oh, look at what I oh, sweetie, you did such a great mm -hmm. just like." Go ahead, if you can tell, tell him, tell him. <laughs> so he bought a recumbent bike yes yesterday or day before day before yesterday, and. Put the bike together. That that's a major undertaking. My husband major. is not the tool man. No. And he so he put this recumbent bike together. Had about forty pieces. I put it together, and I came down with my tool belt on, and I said, "The <laughs> fix it man is here." Hercules, Hercules, he will get rewarded. He did such a good job. And it wasn't even a mess. Everything's put away. You it see, I, so did wonderful. I clean up? Yes, I cleaned up. You did. You I did get a wonderful. You get a job. reward. You go get a reward later on. <laughs> so back to creating that kind of environment. Yes. A nurturing kind where someone will want to talk to you. Where someone will want to come over and be with you. Yeah. Where your kids will want to bring people over. COVID or no COVID, I know we, have, we definitely have to be careful about that with, with mask on. We, our son right. came over, he comes with a mask on. Oh, uh, he surprised us yesterday. Yesterday, he brought us dinner. He brought us dinner. I heard the door, I was like, well, why is the front door opening? He, came and he brought in him seafood, a big old mask. seafood yes. dinner. That and, was so thoughtful. And he said, I just want to bless y'all. But he had his mask on, we had our mask on, and he helped me. I grabbed the mask and put it on, yeah. <laughs> yes. So, 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 uh, look. We, 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 we really do want to talk about this, though, in, in all seriousness, that mental health during this challenging time requires that you seek help, that you communicate, that you don't think it makes you weak to get help. Can Please. I add one more quote? Yeah, go ahead. One more. Pastor Rick Warren, your illness is not your identity. Your chemistry is not your character. Read that again. That's powerful. Okay. Your illness is not your identity. Mm. Your chemistry is not your character. Oh, let me read that quote before go above that. Mental health is not, it needs a great deal of attention. It is, the, it is the final taboo that needs to be faced and dealt with. We have been putting it under rug sweeping under the rug that somebody has a mental health situation and we must say to people okay look folks i understand that now how do we help you we got to talk through this that's what will help relationships this is a challenging time let's give the uh, national suicide oh, get the Prevention number i want to get that again we gave the number out for suicide hotline because we've seen a rise in suicides it's gone up 90 percent in the last decade, 90% and particularly among African Americans in the last decade, but not just African American, but that was not something you heard a lot when we were growing up. But now 90% rise. Wow. So give the number, please. 800-273-8255. Somebody put it in the chat. Somebody put that in the chat. National 800, put that in the chat National over there too. National Suicide Hotline. 800-273-8255. We want people to feel free to know that, that we are going to not criticize, condemn, or feel anything other than love for you. We invite you, you to share mm -hmm. your thoughts, your feelings, and we'll be non-judgmental. Now, we're moving into winter, fall and winter, where the days are getting shorter, sunlight is shorter, and there becomes a... a like a like a cloud mm. over us uh -huh. and so 
it is already a time when people are more depressed. Mm. Now you add to that, and this is like worldwide, the World Health Organization did a survey as of October the 6th, a summary of what was going on worldwide. And that was really in preparation for Mental Health Day, which was October 10th. And they were saying that the mental health crisis is, is just expanding worldwide, mainly because of the pandemic. And then on top of that, you got winter. Right. So, so, so we want to make sure that you understand that we are we have been talking about communication and about how you have these challenging times in every marriage everybody's going to have a moment but that's when you must leave the drama with your mama and or that's chapter number five but then communicate and 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 communication is a chapter we give away please go get the free chapter at jolly marriage and communicating is not talking I mean, it They're doesn't involve you moving your mouth and all work. the time. Not all. It, it, it's multiple times. Make sure it's not just talking, because I want them to know it's talking, it's listening. listening. That's right. Talking and listening. You see, we said it together. Talking and listening, and and body language. If you see some things changing, we want you to be really and, mindful. And communicating. It's listening. It's it's allowing the other person the opportunity to express how they feel without your being judgmental. That is Jolly so advice, important. respect each other's communication style. Identify your spouse's communication style and the discern the difference that reflects their emotions from being under stress to expressing pleasure. Know how to adapt and adjust your communication accordingly. Sometimes people are under stress, and you got to watch how. That's why D has already said, always said, one of the keys to our marriage is she studies me. She studies me and has been. That's because of your character. Well, I I'm trying to figure out how to control you. That's really it. But then I would say, I want to influence you. But the bottom line is, my dictatorial side, really, <laughs> what I'm trying to do is control you. And it just requires everything that I have. So. Well, you do a great job. I thank you, dear. You do thank a great you job. So, much. so, so we want to. One more thing we want you to do. Please let us know uh, any topics that you want to talk about. We want to start addressing not only those topics in our weekly programming, but also as we prepare for our marriage event, online virtual marriage event. We want to be able to address those topics and address things that are, are critical and, and important to you. So what are you dealing with in your marriage? What are you dealing with in your relationship? Would you send us an email with that, please? Uh, at info at williejolly.com. Info at williejolly.com. So here's what we, we are, we're struggling with. It might be finances. It might be communication. might be sexual issues. It might be money um, uh, management issues. It might be uh, arguing, just arguing about, we, we have people argue about stuff that, we, why are they arguing about that? But you know, because they, somebody got to be right. So, I was getting ready to say somebody has to be right. Somebody want to be right. I got to be and right. Then, and then you have to think through why is it so important that one person be right and the other person be wrong. Then that gets, it, that gets, it that's gets a, to your, a whole, whole other issue of self-esteem. And self-concept. Self, self self yeah. So let me tell you, D knows I love this woman. I crawl, I crawl over broken glass to get to this woman. And if she leave me, I'm coming with her. Hello. And she know that. So we, when she said, I got to have vacation, I said, where are we going? <laughs> she said, I need a vacation. I said, yeah, I agree. But, you know, where, sometimes where are we going? I, I, I can tell you honest too. Sometimes I'm like, oh, he is so off the chain. I must have a break from you. So I tell him. Yeah. And then I say, well, I, I might have to go to the bathroom <laughs> and close the door. <laughs> Because I'm, I'm high, high energy, you know, I'm bouncing off the wall. So, so it's good to have a sense of humor. It, it has saved me, saved my sanity. What little bit I got left. <laughs> Share this video, this audio, this link with Lottie, Dottie, and everybody, people in your network. Just send it out to them. Hey, watch this. 
This is the Jollies. You need to watch them Monday nights, 9 o'clock on Instagram Live and Facebook Live. And so we want you to do that. Second, we want you to uh, send us your questions as we prepare for uh, more programming that will speak to your needs, that will be right along with a lot of things we got from people we interviewed in the book, like communication, about we'll find out if the person is a, is a uh, suspect or a prospect if you're looking to be married. And then last but not least, if you're married, how do you develop friendships after you have gone down the road a while and things have started to separate? Last but not least, we want you to also to make sure that you keep loving each other through the tough times. But we want to save marriages. And you don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. That's right. So you always have to be prepared so you will have no regrets. No regrets. Okay. There you go. So look, folks, we got to go. Thank you, sweetie pie. My pleasure. You're so sweet. Thank you. You're cute, too. I love you. I love you more. So, jolly hey, out. jolly out. See y'all later. Bye-bye.